Gavin Hattersley is the CEO of Molson Coors. He joins us now to discuss. It's great to have you here, Gavin. Thanks for joining us. So, so neither you nor Coca-Cola. Good, good to have you on. You guys didn't announce the financial terms of this agreement. So how are you explaining to investors what the benefit will be for Molson Coors of this partnership? Adding Topo Chico to our portfolio is really going to make our seltzer portfolio one of the strongest that's out there. It's going to be a real complement to Coors Seltzer and Busy, which we also have just launched this year. Uh, from a top line point of view, um, it's uh, another proof point against our growth plan. We're just going to ask about the competition. So you have two of your own hard seltzer brands. So would you not be prioritizing those brands when it comes to marketing? And, and you guys are all going to compete here for market share, right? Well, I think the, the, the key thing with our portfolio of brands is that they're going to be very differentiated. Uh, Busy and Queer Seltzer and Topo Chico now and, and Proofpoint, which we're launching next year, all have very clearly defined places in the seltzer category. And we don't see them competing with each other at all. In fact, we see it as complementary and, and a really powerful, strong portfolio. What's your view on, on beer outlook now? Uh, is the fact that you're adding another uh, hard seltzer to your, your portfolio a sign that beer ultimately is uh, on a sort of path of long-term decline or plateau? No, not at all. You know, when we laid out our plans to get to growth at the end of uh, last year, uh, core beer remains important to us. But uh, of equal importance is growing above premium and beyond the, the beer aisles. And the, the deals that we've done over the last uh, few weeks with uh, the joint venture with, with Yingling, the investment in Zen Water, with the entrepreneur uh, Lance Collins, um, you know, four new brands with our LA Libations uh, joint venture, and now the deal with uh, Coca-Cola with Topo Chico, all um, are complements to that plan to, to drive beyond the beer aisle. A lot of analysts are excited about the ex potential exposure you could have to the Latino market, which is obviously growing very fast and, and one of the hottest demographic trends out there. What are your plans for that? What, what kind of insight do you hope to get? Well, you're right. I mean, Topo Chico has been around for 125 years. Um, it's got a very strong uh, following in the, in the mineral water um, category, and uh, we're going to capitalize on that. Uh, so we'll start out in in areas where the brand is is particularly strong and um, well known, and that's in the in the south of the of the country, and then we'll have a, a, a very deliberate uh, national expansion over time. Uh, has uh, the growth in hard seltzer had anything to do with lockdown and, and drinking from home, or was this already something that was was growing fast as a as a part of the pie within drinking as a whole? It has been growing fast, um, and uh, frankly, the, the growth rate of, of Celsius has, uh, has continued in the, in the sort of triple-digit range, which is why it's so important for us to have a strong portfolio, and, and uh, Topo Chico is a, a real complement to that. Gavin, what, what's going on with the stock? Why, why such persistent long-term weakness here? I, I, I get that beer is sort of in the secular decline, but, but you've been hedging and diversifying, and I imagine more people are going out to restaurants and bars now that economies have opened. So what do you make of the stock price and the weakness there? Well, that's why we laid out the plan that we did at the end of uh, last year, uh, to really focus in on our iconic core brands, uh, which Middle Light and Coors Light. And uh, you're right, we have uh, delivered a lot more beer during the pandemic. Uh, I think we've, uh, we've produced 14 million more cans uh, during the pandemic sorry, cases of, of, of uh, beer during the pandemic uh, than we did uh, last year. And the plan requires us to drive beyond uh, the beer aisle. Um, and I've laid out some of the, the deals that we've done recently and also in the above premium category. And uh, Blue Moon Light Sky is a new entrant uh, for us there and doing so well that we're having to expand capacity in our Milwaukee brewery as we're expanding capacity in our Fort Worth brewery for uh, our seltzer portfolio. Finally, can you give us a read of what you're seeing out there in terms of reopenings, bars and restaurants, limited capacity, potential shutdowns again with a second wave? What do you see? You know, it's different uh, depending on which state you're in. I mean, obviously, we had a, almost a complete shutdown in the, in the early part of the second quarter, and we saw some bounce back at the back end of the second quarter, and uh, it's, it, it has accelerated over the, over the last uh, few months. And what we've found is it's, it's kind of plateaued at a, at a particular level if, if one state goes into a slightly more 
stringent lockdown. So does another state open up. So, you know, it's not um, by any means back to where it was uh, before uh, the, the pandemic uh, set in. Uh, but the off-premise is, is helping a lot, although it doesn't uh, totally offset uh, the on-premise losses that we've experienced. Off-premise, people drinking at home. Uh, huge That's theme. Correct. We'll talk about it with General Mills next hour. Gavin, thank you for joining us. Gavin Hattersley, CEO of Molson Coors. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.